You are live. Thank you. You are live. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome. Uh, so this morning, I'm going to cover and discuss how organizations can embrace security in their SDLC. So effectively, how do we secure our software development lifecycle? And, and basically build security into DevOps. So if we're going to look at sort of the the um, uh, the origin of DevOps, how it originated, where it came from, implications that it's it's had with organisations, understand what we mean by DevSecOps, why it's important, what it is, how we go about kind of embracing DevSecOps, and then the sort of the next steps to putting it all into practice, bringing it together. So if we think about um, application development, so I'm going to show my age a little bit here. So in the 1990s, I was working as a programmer on PL1 COBOL, a language that was released 20 years earlier. That makes me really feel old. But during my time as a programmer on mainframes, we started to see this thing called the World Wide Web appearing. and we became internet enabled. We moved from green screen dumb terminals to PCs. Um, we sort of saw in flash programming, um, those kind of things kind of began to take effect. As we moved into the 2000s, we hear about agile as early as 2001. In 2005, there was a declaration of agile inter interdependent where it was expected to work alongside of the web and application development and then there was a software craftsmanship manifesto created in 2009 and scrum agile development were all kind of embraced as things in the late 2000s 2009 onwards and since then devops has kind of exploded coined, as I say, in 2009, the idea was to encourage collaboration between development teams and operation teams to allow this concept of continuous application release, move it into a more automated process, continuous integration, continuous development, essentially being able to deliver updates to an application on a daily basis. That's the panacea. Today, people like Amazon, uh, are releasing hundreds of micro releases to their application on a daily basis. And so, you know, we've, we've come to kind of live with this concept of SDLC, this concept of DevOps. But, you know, for a long time, it ignored security. And security was kind of pushed out on a sideline and ignored. And you know, we we talk about DevSecOps now as though it's really easy to do and that all that you need is a couple of tools, like a silver bullet. But is DevSecOps integrating security into our DevOps process that good? Is it really a silver bullet that answers all of our application development problems? Well, if you look at the Verizon Data Breach Report from 2018, you can see that number one, Breaches per pattern was web applications, and web applications had the highest incident per pattern. Okay, so that was nearly two years ago now. Um, I guess we'll see the new Verizon re report maybe at the back end of December, more likely January 2021. But what did they say in 2019? Well, funnily enough, it was no different. Top hacking vectors in breaches, still web applications by a huge margin. And so we're not really learning. You know, we think about DevOps, we move to this agile development process, and yet we're still seeing the same things, the same problems, the same vulnerabilities appearing within our applications on a week in, week out basis. Injections, top one in the OWASP top 10 in 2017 was the top one in 2013. Broken authentication, same again. In fact, there was a few changes in the 2017 OWASP top 10, but a significant portion just moved position. 
and yet we're really into this con you know this this enablement this embracing of devsecops today i'm having constant conversations with our customers about how they can kind of move from a a waterfall type development process to a DevSecOps process? How can we embed security into our development process? And often they come to me and say, so what tools do I need to buy, Simon? And my answer to that is, you don't until you've got your process and your people sorted. And that's the key thing. This is not just about buying tools from your favorite SaaS vendor, your favorite DAST vendor, but understanding every single component that makes a successful DevSecOps process um, work. Back in 2017, apologies, a little bit old now, I couldn't find anything more up to date from Gartner. The number one hurdle to using DevOps in a regulated situation was collaboration with security. As a security analyst or a security manager or a CISO, we often find that security still cling on to security by design. Nothing can leave my manufacturing process until it's secure. DevOps, yeah, you know what? We'll scan the applications, we'll run a pen test once we go live. I can't afford to add security into my DevOps tool chain. And remember, DevOps is probably a CTO function, not a CISO function, two completely separate budgets. I need to get this application out as quickly as possible. I need to make sure that I'm ready for Black Friday with this brand new web app. I don't care about security. I've got to focus on the end goal, that end process. And the problem then is, you know, I'll give it to security at the very end, but often by then the cost per fix is astronomical. Again, 2017 figures suggest that by the time you get to a production application, your cost per fix is in the thousands of dollars, not the tens of dollars if you tackle it at the code level. So how do we do it? How do we get security into a DevOps environment? Security by its nature isn't agile. It's not designed to be very flexible. You need to break down that silo. We need to get over the mentality of security sits in its ivory tower and ignores the, well, not ignores, but kind of dictates to the rest of the business what should and shouldn't happen. They need to become more flexible. They need to become embedded into the process and they need to change their mentality. It's a massive kind of shift left mentality, moving away from, I touch this at the end, to security is embedded throughout the process. But can DevSecOps work? Um, well, I, I would hope so because, you know, again, we have these conversations with a number of our customers on a regular basis and we help them embrace DevSecOps. But often I hear kind of myths, and funnily enough, I've seen several myths already in some of the presentations. Uh, you can't get security into a DevOps process by the sheer fact that security is not agile. I don't need security tools. All I need are my configuration management tools. They handle the security. They don't really, you know, it's not relevant. But I've got DevOps. Why do I need security experts? I don't need to worry about security. I'm, I'm running this super duper agile DevOps process. Yeah, we've got DevOps. It's fine. All I need to do is, you know, move DevOps and then tag SecOps after DevOps. And I've got DevOps, SecOps, and, you know, I can do it. I've, I've done it with DevOps. I can easily do it with security. Problem is, it's not that easy. We often think, as I say, we think about tools. I need a SaaS tool. I need a DAS tool. I need something else to run in the middle. I need to be able to have tools that work, that allow me to scan applications throughout their life cycle. Yeah, but what you're scanning for? What is the process? What is the KPIs that you're measuring? What is it you're looking to do? What is the achievement here? We need to first and foremost think about that process. What are our goals when we talk about DevSecOps? What is the aim? Is it fix every vulnerability before the application goes live? 
or is it mitigate the critical vulnerabilities, accept that we're going to have medium vulnerabilities and figure out how we can live with those and compensate for them in the live? What are my measurements? How am I going to understand if my development teams are coding securely or whether they're making the same mistakes over and over again? And then what do I do when these things come up? You know, we need to distribute security decision making to the right people with the right context at the right time. Wherever those breakpoints or those gates for that application moving from one environment to the next, maybe that's where you will have the security context and you'll have the security decision making. Embed it into the teams themselves, make it accessible by developers and make it something that's not taboo. Make it so that people are comfortable talking security and they understand why it's important. Identify people in these teams, these DevOps teams that have a security bias. Make them champions. The champion is somebody that bridges the gap between the traditional developer and the security team themselves. They're the ones that can act as the decision points in those gates. We go from code to build into UAT. I can make decision points as a security champion at those stages while still doing my development job. I can identify the problems quicker, earlier. I can talk in a language that my development teams understand, not in a language that the security guys understand. I can be paired with somebody in the security team who maybe still has to have a final say as we move into production, but at least I can then liaise and help everybody understand where we are. When we do that kind of link, we're able to bridge the gap between the security team and the way they think about security and the development team and the way they think about getting that application out as quickly as possible and how they think about you know, the way they code and the way they run their application build processes. It allows it to fit within your agile sprints, if that's a weekly sprint, a bi-weekly sprint, a monthly sprint, et cetera. It becomes the main point of call for the security team. Simon, what's going on? Give me an update on this new application that you're going to launch for Black Friday. What's the security status of that? I don't need to be an expert. I can simply say, hey, look, you know, we've got X critical, Y high, a bunch of mediums. We're focusing this sprint on tackling the criticals and the highs. We should be good to go based on our, our expectations and our acceptable, you know, what we are accepting as as a go live commitment. So we've got our security champions bedded into the t into the development process and the ops process. We know what our process is. Our goal is to try and deliver secure applications as good as possible um, within a certain set of constraints and boundaries that are not going to throttle that agility that we need to be able to react to our market forces. Then we can start thinking about tools. And again, when we think about tools, it's all it's all about how are our development teams and our oper operations teams working? If we're running daily sprints and we want to be able to assess each sprint before it goes live or we push it into production, then the tools that we choose can't take 24, 48, 56 hours to run. They probably can't even take 12 hours to run because we don't have the time. So we've got to think about the frequency. How often are we going to scan? How long are those scans or those tools going to run? I don't want developers being sidetracked by learning more UIs. Security UIs, very different to how a, 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 you know, a developer codes or how Git would work, for instance. We need to make sure that those tools embed in the process really nicely. And then it's noise as well, making sure that we're not generating thousands of alerts that flood the backlog that cause a developer extended time to go live because they have to go through each and every single one of these items. So think about the noise, the false positives or the, the total number of findings that you actually want to get pushed into the backlog. Once we've got these answers, 
we understand the KPIs that we're measuring. We understand how we're going to approach it from a process point of view. We've got the champions in place so they can handle any of the more complicated scenarios. We're in a position to start thinking about embedding those tools into the CICD process and selecting the right ones for our needs. We've got to think, though, again, back to the process. Security don't like uh, don't do not like things being pushed out that are vulnerable. Uh, why would we? Because we don't want our organization to be compromised. But when we chase a culture of perfection, and in this scenario, what we mean is fix everything before live, we throttle the agility that's baked into that SDLC process. When we're talking about DevOps, we're talking about that continuous integration, continuous development of applications. If I have to stop that process because a sprint is riddled with vulnerabilities that are medium or low risk to fix them, I'm just killing my whole agile process. So we've got to come to a compromise and we've got to think not everything needs to be fixed when we go into live. I've invested tens of thousands of dollars in web application firewall technology, in intrusion prevention systems, in next-gen firewalls, in PAM modules. We, we do that naturally to protect our organization. So when it comes to those applications that we're staging for our customers to interact with, use those tools to mitigate as many of the lower risk vulnerabilities as possible to buy the developers time to address them. Focus on fixing critical and high, if necessary, vulnerabilities. Those AO1, those AO2, those AO3 vulnerabilities in the uh, you know, OWASP top 10, or look at the top five or 10 of the SANS 25 in terms of their risk scores and focus on making sure that those CWEs don't exist across my code. Mitigate others and then work on a plan to address them at a later point when you've got more breathing space after that application is out. The tools that we select to back all of this up should be equally agile both in integration, fit with any scenario, and in scanning speed, being able to scan with results as quickly as possible. Open API-based to tools will allow you to embed them directly into your CI-CD tool chain. When I commit code to GitHub, if I can then call through an API call, a code scanner, a SAS scanner to scan my code, to assess the code, to then through open API calls, push findings into my JIRA backlog. The developer never needs to worry about it. They don't need to worry about the tool. The tool takes care of itself. All they worry about is what's in the backlog. The same with a DAS scanner or a container inspection or a cloud infrastructure scanner, making sure everything comes back into the backlog is run seamlessly means it just happens in the background. The developers don't necessarily even know it's there or need to know how it works, just that they will get findings that, that are security related that they need to tackle. And if something's not clear, they go to the champion, the champion may have additional training and knowledge on the tool itself. They can potentially then look at the UI. They can assess what that finding actually is if it's not clear in the backlog um, uh, ticket and help the developer uh, address it accordingly. So the tools fit depending on where we're interested in and, and what stage we are in, in our DevOps cycle how far left, that shift left mentality we want to go. Anything from pen testing, a hybrid pen test, a continuous assessment, blending, automation, a manual pen test for your production, business critical applications, all the way to sort of number one, secure code training. Something that you know I personally think we, we forget about. 
we assume that our developers, they're good at their jobs, they know how to code. We kind of assume that they're able to code securely. Well, unfortunately, you know, stats are showing otherwise. We're still constantly releasing weak applications. So making sure that our developers get a good level of e-learning training is really, really important. Make it gamified so that they can focus on the fun aspects. They don't realize necessarily that they're being kind of that they're learning in that sense. SAS scanners for application source code analysis. SCA tools for understanding the third party libraries that we're using, making sure that they are compliant and up to date. API testing, dedicated security testing tools for API. A new um, category that um, Gartner are, are, are monitoring at the moment. Very few players in that space, but when it's done right, you get a really good sense of your APIs and the security that they, they pose to the business or the risks, sorry, that they pose. DAS scanners, um, we, you know, we all know about DAS scanners, dynamic application security testing tools, scanning the application once it's live, running them, understanding you know, how interaction works and the kind of vulnerabilities and risks that uh, exist at that point. And then the tried and tested things like manual testing, those ad hoc pen tests. Maybe you do one at release or just after release. Maybe you do one every two months or even every, you know, twice a year, depending on the requirements of that application. Ensuring that all these tools fit, but, but more importantly, that they fit with your SDLC DevOps process that they're as seamless as possible from a development point of view. So even your manual testing, making sure that findings that come out of that end up in the backlog as automatically as possible, saves time, effort, and allows your developers to be working on those things almost immediately. So just some final thoughts. When we talk about DevSecOps, it's a challenge, absolutely. It often requires massive mind shifts and, and shifts in the way that we expect things to work. It requires security to break down some of their barriers to embed themselves into the DevOps process, perhaps as far as sitting with the developers and the operations teams in that project pool. It's about process, people, then tools. If you try and do your tools first and then match your process to your tools, your process probably will fail. If you forget about the people and assume that the security guys are going to run the tools, the process will fail. You will slow everything down. The process is all about achieving good security, not perfection. It's about ensuring that security keeps pace with the DevOps process, allows us to keep pace with our sprints. If we don't do that, security becomes the bottleneck. We lose agility. We miss the go to market point. And then people. Find people in the teams who have a natural bias towards security, who are perhaps good at secure code already. Maybe they've done it before in other companies. Maybe they like to hack on an evening because they find it fun. They're learning about web application security. Make them the development champions for security. Get them interacting with the security team. Get a bit of job share knowledge share between the two so that they can act as the interface because you know you guys in security are busy all the time you know you've not just got applications to worry about you've got phishing attacks you've got a whole raft of things that you need to be concerned about uh, the people that you know your, your actual employees across the organization doing things that they shouldn't yeah, you don't have time to be able to react to a weekly sprint and provide the necessary security sign off and input every time. So empower these champions to make some of those decisions. But of course, if it's still mandatory that the CISO understands the risk posture of the applications before it goes live, 
then make sure that's baked into the process so that there is a natural break point, even if it's a, for a day where the security team get more hands on and more invested in the state of that application. Once you understand your process, your people, we can then do our tools. Making sure that those tools are as invisible to the development team as possible, that they interact nicely with our CI CD tool chain, whether that's Atlassian, whether that's Azure Foundation Services, whether that's GitHub Enterprise, or any of the myriad other tools out there that support CI CD, SDLC, et cetera but make sure that they're invisible and that the results are always pushed into the backlog in a timely manner for the developers to react to for their next upcoming sprints. And test sooner. Don't leave it to production to think, I need to do security testing of my application because for every finding there, you're looking at round about $5,000 to $7,000 a fix in cost to the business. Whereas down at my code level, it's 50 to 100 dollars per finding i'm sure from a budgetary point of view we'd want to be closer to the beginning further left than further right in our security testing so hopefully that was interesting and gave you some thoughts and ideas about how to embrace devsecops and how to add security to our SDLC. Uh, I'll be hanging around for any questions if there are any in chat. Uh, otherwise, enjoy the rest of the uh, expo today. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Simon, for such a wonderful presentation. Uh, thank you so much for your time that you have given to us. Uh, it is a prestige and honor for us that people like you, the professional like you, uh, are the part of our conference. And I hope this conference has created an impact and these insights will help our audience in their businesses in the future operations. Thank you so much. And I will request my audience if they have any question, do ask them uh, in the main chat. Julian, uh, Simon is here to answer your questions and we will move to our next presentation. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. all. Thank you. Thank you. We will move to our next presentation, which will be given by Sachin Tonk, who, will, who is working as a director data and advanced analytics and privacy. Just wait a moment and within a few minutes, we will be going to uh, present Sachin Tong. <laughs>